hey, whenever you are sourcing your solar panels, you ever look at the data plate, you're trying to figure out the voltage, and you see that there's two different voltages there. You're looking at the amperage or the current, and you see two different currents. So let's go ahead and go over what the um, what all this means. Welcome to Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday, brought to you by Big Beard Battery. Visit BigBeardBattery.com. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss anything. Now the first one is it's always going to be rated in watts. Typically with solar panels, they will rate them in watts. This is a 200 watt solar panel. Another word for watts is power. So you may see the initials there, PMPP. That's just maximum power at maximum power point or power at maximum power point. What is the wattage at its maximum power point? You know, sun directly on it at a given temperature. In this case, it's going to be 72 degrees or 25 C, somewhere around there. Um, 72 degrees, maximum power point, we can conceivably pull about 200 watts. Now, when you're putting your panels, either in series or parallel, like batteries, you have a solar controller. And one of the limitations on a solar controller is you don't want to overvolt it. So you're looking at the data plates and you're seeing, okay, well, let me read the volts. And there's a voltage on here, VOC, which stands for volts open circuit. That just means that there's pressure there, but there's no load. Right, and then you have another one that says VMPP. Well, there's that term again, MPP, that's maximum power point. So here's the thing, voltage, just like anything else, if there is no current, we have a maximum amount of pressure, or in this case, potential. And on that, we'll see a VOC, maybe somewhere, on this particular panel, we have 25.71. What does that mean? Well, without any load, if I were to take my multimeter and take the two terminals and check that, with good sun strike, I should see roughly around 25.17 volts, okay? Now, whenever that pressure turns into flow, well, then we're gonna see that pressure drop. Well, how much? Well, under maximum power point, the voltage will drop on this particular one to 21.89. So here's the question is, which one do we use to protect our solar controller? Because what we don't wanna do is overvolt our solar controller. So what we always do is use the larger number, volts open circuit. Now there's one more consideration I'll get to here in just a second, so put a pin in that. It's the same thing when it comes to current. Okay, there's two different numbers on here for current. There's an ISC, I just stands for intensity, it's another way that we actually say current, or amps. SC just stands for short circuit. If I were to short circuit this thing and do this, the maximum current draw is going to be a particular number. In this particular case, 9.6 amps. The IFC will always be the higher current number. But then you have your maximum power point for current, IMPP. Again, I just stands for intensity, right? There's a, there is a, when electricity runs down a wire, there's a magnetic force, what we call magnetic flux around the wire. And we're looking at the intensity. The higher the current, the greater the intensity around that wire. So they'll use I. You may know it as A, or you may know it as current, right? So whichever one, just understand that's the maximum under load, 9.1. So again, short circuit, 9.6. This particular one, when it's just standard current, the maximum we're going to see is 9.1, okay? So here's the thing. When we're, when we're uh, pairing these with our solar controllers, whether we put them in series or parallel, we always opt for the higher number. There's one more thing we got to look at. On here, this particular panel was rated at 25 degrees Celsius, which again, roughly around 72 degrees Fahrenheit here in America. So what they're saying is at 72 degrees, we're going to see 200 watts, right around 21.89 uh, volts at maximum power point. Here's what we need to consider. What does heat have to do with this? Well, heat is kind of a resistor when it comes to electricity. The more heat we have, the, the harder it is for it to actually push through. So the adverse is true as well. Okay, now on super hot days, we may not see, uh, we may not see a, a, a total uh, VMPP because there's going to be kind of a degradation due to the heat. Our biggest concern is whenever the solar panel is in cold weather with good sun strike, then we can exceed the VOC, what we call a temperature coefficient. So what am I getting at? If I have a solar controller that's 75 volts and I want to put, you know, say, you know, three or four of these panels, which are 200 watts, at 75 volts, well, I could take this number, 25.17, I said, well, I can't, I can't put three of those in series. I'm already over the 75 volts. But let's just say that the VOC was 24 volts. Okay. Can I take three of those, put them in series, 
and wind up at what? 72 volts. Okay. Is that sufficient, you know, for my solar controller that's 75 volts or is that too much? Well, I'll tell you, it's too much because in cooler weather, what's going to happen is these, if on a good sun strike, right, these can exceed that 24 volts if they're 24 volts, right? So we call it a temperature coefficient. Now, Vitron has a wonderful tool. I'm always going to plug that. The Vitron Toolkit, where you can put in the solar panel of your choice, and it's going to tell you what solar controller you have. But here's what we do. Simply take off on a small array, take off between 20 and 25 volts. I could take two of these and put them in parallel. They'll put me at 50 volts, and with a 75 volt, ooh, I'm still kind of cringing on that one. I'd go with the 100 volt solar controller, right? So maybe around 50%, maybe a little bit more. I, it's not going to exceed it by a lot, but the more panels you put in series, they, they're additive. They're just gonna keep adding up. So best thing to do, first off, is just use the Vitron Toolkit app, type in the, uh, the particular parameters that you see on the solar uh, panel data plate, and it will recommend it for you. Uh, again, you could take a, a good swath at it and say, hey, let's knock off 30, 40 volts on a small array. Right, so I'm always talking about RVs, and I think part of the problem is, is I'm so used to talking about this in relation to RVs. And some of you viewers are coming over maybe from a home or something like that where there's a larger array. Well, definitely want to use the toolkit for that because that array is way larger. Keep that in mind that we're always going to use the highest numbers when it comes to the data plate, and we have to factor in for temperature, what we call a temperature coefficient, and we don't want to be anywhere close to the highest number on there. So opt for that, use the toolkit, and have a wonderful solar day. Solar day. What that? That sounds so... <laughs> what am I? Um, Mr. Rogers? All right, there's your tech tip. <laughs> Hey, if you got questions about batteries or want to go ahead and put in a solar system, but need some guidance, head over to BigBeardBattery.com, fill out the solar design form, and one of our certified solar experts will give you a call and get you started.